Hello, I'm Bob McFarland, a software developer with Scripty Systems. I'll be your host as we take a look at working with calendars in Scheduler. If you haven't already watched the other videos that precede this one, I suggest that you do so. This video will make more sense once you know how to start a project, import a script, and work with a stripboard. Calendars, of course, are used to set up the time frame for the various phases of the production process so that you can apply the calendar to a stripboard and see how a particular schedule will work out. Let's take a look at calendars. To access your calendars, click the scheduling menu, then calendars. I'll click the plus button to add a calendar and the add calendar window opens. If you're working on a standalone production such as a single feature film, you might want to name the calendar something like the February start. If you have to experiment with other options based on an actor's schedule or some other factor, you can name it accordingly. If you're working on a series, each episode would have its own calendar for that week of shooting, so I would name the calendar based on the episode number. I'll just call this one the February start and click the Save button. The calendar window opens and you can see several phases of the entire process from development to delivery. You don't have to use all of these, so if you want to delete the development phase, for example, just select it in the list and click the trash can. Confirm that you want to delete it and it's gone. You can always add it back in by clicking the plus button. Well, let's use the production phase. Currently, there's just one day for the production phase. So let's set the date range. I'll click the circle with the arrow in it to edit the date range for this phase. I'll set the start date to February 1st. And we'll say we have 30 days to shoot this movie. I'll enter 30 for the shoot days and tab out of it. It automatically calculates that it will be a total of 40 calendar days based on a five day shooting week and the production phase will conclude on March 12th. That looks good, so I'll click save. Notice on the right hand side, we have unit settings for the production phase. The main unit is selected. Once you have multiple units, you can configure them individually here. For each unit, you can set up multiple ranges of work dates, each one with different settings for the days of the week and the working hours per day. Maybe for a stretch of two weeks, the main unit will be working Tuesday through Saturday. You can add as many blocks of dates as you need. Click the plus button next to working days to add additional blocks of date ranges for this unit. As I mentioned, within a date range, you can set the days of the week the unit will be working. The days of the week that are checked will show as production days on the strip board, while days of the week that are not checked will show as non-production days. You can also set the number of hours per day this unit will be using as a standard work day. The number of hours per day is used in the strip board function that will calculate the day breaks based on the estimated time for each strip and the number of hours per day. Watch the strip boards video for more info about that. To make changes to a date range, double click it in the list or click the circle with the arrow in it. I'll go ahead and set the number of hours per day to 10. Nah, I'll make it 12. We do want to be realistic. You guys work long hours. I'll go ahead and click Save to lock in the changes. You can also add blocked days for holidays or other special days off. Click the plus button here to add a blocked date. So let's say our number one actor has a special Valentine's weekend plan, so we're giving the entire crew the Friday before and the Monday after off. I'll select the 12th, then hold the Shift key and select the 15th. Now I'll save it. Notice that four lines were entered, one for each date. We just track the actual dates individually to give you more flexibility. Once you've set up a unit's calendar, you can copy all the settings to another unit. You select the other unit from the dropdown, then click the copy icon next to the dropdown. Select the unit in the list and click the Save button. Notice the block dates have been carried over. If you have, for example, a US unit and a French unit, you may need to edit the block dates. For example, if you're shooting around Thanksgiving, the French unit may not have those dates off. Just remove them from the French unit by selecting them in the list and clicking the trash can. Then add any block dates that are applicable for the French unit. All right, I'll close down the calendar windows. So that takes care of setting up a calendar. You can have as many calendars as necessary in order to cover all of your various scheduling options. Now let's apply a calendar to a strip board. I'll click the scheduling menu, then strip boards, and double click on our main strip board. To apply a calendar to a strip board, I just select it from the drop down. I'll verify that I want to apply the calendar. Now let's take a look at what happened. We now have dates on our day breaks. Each day is numbered as production day one, two, etc. But notice day five is Friday and day six is Monday. We skipped the non-working days. Now this is important to remember. 
After applying a calendar to a strip board, if you want to insert additional day breaks, you have to switch the view to include non-production days. You do that by clicking the video camera in the upper left. The video camera indicates these are shooting days only. I'll click it. Now you can see the two non-production days for Saturday and Sunday. You'll also need to do that if you want to drag something into a non-production day. To switch back to hiding the non-production days, click the calendar button that replaced the video camera. You'll also notice a button next to the video camera, the arrow. Click that button to show only days that are in the future. Now since all of our days are in the future, not much happens. But if they weren't, only the days in the future would be showing in the strip board. I'll also point out a couple of other things that are now visible. The megaphone in the daybreak line takes you to the call sheet configuration window for that day. We'll deal with that in another video. The other new button that appears has a lightning bolt on it. If you'll be shooting outside on a particular day and you may have problems with the weather, you can drag strips from other days and drop them onto the lightning bolt to set up cover sets. Sets where you know you can shoot in case the weather is bad. I'll drag one to demonstrate. After I drop it, the strip is not removed from its scheduled day, but the button changes to indicate that you have cover sets for this day. Click the button to see the list. To remove a strip from the list of cover sets, click on it, then click the trash can and confirm the deletion. I'll just click Done for now. At any time, you can go back and change a calendar, and the affected strip boards will adjust accordingly. Well, I think that covers calendars and how to configure them and how they affect a strip board. Be sure to check out the other videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.